Hey everyone, in this video I'll be talking about world of electric vehicles. So what are we going to talk about in this video which is related to previous videos that we have talked about about electric vehicles and benefits that it provides while using an electric vehicle. First and foremost, we need to talk about what is the purpose and the background of the electric vehicle. So first we need to know the first electric vehicle which was developed by Parker in 1884 and that had a exceeding speed the max speed of 100 km per hour and well that was the first electric car and as you can see over here it also uses fast charging stations obviously not as fast as they are today but in the old times of times of 1884 it was pretty fast enough for going to one destination from another destination all right so what this did was it allowed uh, to travel from distance say for example from brussels to paris and what it uses is electric vehicle system, EVS. And what happens is that for one fast charge, when you charge using this station over here, for one charge, you can go from Brussels to Paris in one charge. And that really made a system very uh, reliable. And the idea was very popular at that time. So what really happened is uh, the demand for electric vehicles grew. It grew at the point where big manufacturers such as Renault and uh, other GMs for other manufacturing companies, they started out making electric vehicles. However, what happened was the oil crisis happened and they were getting pressurized from the oil giants that this electric cars could replace our future. So oil trading companies and oil manufacturers manufacturing companies were panicking and they were paying out the GMs to stop the usage of electric cars because if the demand for electric cars grew people would not be paying the money they would be paying today for a uh, gasoline car because definitely a gasoline car would be taking a lot of money over the time uh, compared to electric cars. So what happened basically was GM recalled all his lease. So whatever cars that were out and given to the people, the lease were taken back by the GM and all of them were crushed one by one. And you can see this documentary by who killed the electric car on YouTube and they can give you a proper summary of actual reality that had occurred. So next thing that we want to talk about is is electric driving really the best solution for the environment and what happens when we talk about this topic is if the car were driving on sustainable energy the carbon dioxide emissions could be further reduced more than 10 times so every time a gasoline car drives uh, an electric car would be throwing out uh, co2 emissions 10 times less than a nominal uh, gasoline or ICE engine cars and furthermore what we can do to even more, uh, increase this um, safety measures for the environment is use the hybrid or plug-in hybrid cars so what happens is hybrid are basically the ones that are can be adaptable to both electrical and the gasoline so it really depends on the owner of the vehicle whether the, how the vehicle is being used whereas the plug-in hybrids are vehicles that can be charged using a plug-in methodology all right so what happens is whenever a user is using hybrid or plug-in hybrid vehicles it improves the scores factor by two so instead of 10 it, it increases the valuability of environment giving it positive benefits by the factor of two so overall impa impact of um, battery electric vehicle can be five times smaller than conventional fuels when we consider belgian electric uh, electricity mix so this is just an example that we did and uh, we even from our previous videos we found out that electric driving is particularly the best um, and now what we are going to talk about is economy so there are countries where they have to sign contracts and whenever the contracts are signed uh, the oil dependency is increased and when we try to electrify this whole transportation system what we do is 
Additionally, we are creating 1 million jobs, such as if we, uh, the article says it uh, generates uh, 1 million jobs in Europe by 2030, and then it would be 2 million by the time we reach 2050. So what really happens when we do that, when we try to make our whole sector and electric cars, it reduces our oil dependency. All right, and in the previous video, I've talked about the estimated fuel saving over the span of a car lifetime would be $4,130. That is assuming the price change has not been done to the oil. And this is the amount of money that a family can have a purchasing power of if they are not dependent on oil based products such as gasoline cars and what they would do is they would have this much amount of purchasing power for instance in this example four thousand one hundred thirty dollars they can use this amount in other things such as products groceries or something that would rather be more beneficial than just spending on gasoline cars so what really happens is that doing so uh, there is a drawback and uh, several benefits. So if you were to account for several benefits, the several benefits and the drawback comes from the loss of income from duties and taxes on diesel and petrol will negatively impact government budgets. So the government part of the government budgets are based on the taxes and the duties you pay for the petrol or diesel that you take. However, since nobody is going to be doing that, the government who has bought the contract for the diesel and petrol will have to pay amount of money because nobody in the country is using it. However, what this does is just a one drawback. However, you get several benefits out of it. And the benefits are you get improved air quality, which will have a positive effect on the health budget because less people will be getting cancer, less people will be getting sick due to this carbon dioxide emission. And then this results in less expenses for healthcare and cleaning of monuments. So, for example, if you were to take in Taj Mahal, for example, how it has become yellowish due to the carbon dioxide emission that wouldn't be taking place because nobody is going to be using assuming that they are all using electric vehicles such thing would never occur so the cleansing of monuments budgets to do that would also be reduced to nil because everyone is using electric vehicles now how does this factors really help us in the year 2050 so Right now we have autonomous cars that drive by itself, we can call it self-driving vehicles and we can see that what happens is that they will be much more improved by the year of 2050 and how they are going to be better candidates than the cars today are that you'll be more equipped with how you are going to be using your cell phones. So for example, have you put an alarm? Uh, on your cell phone that hey uh, wake me up at 7 a.m. you can do the same thing by the year 2050 that because you have a job to go to at 8 o'clock you want your car to be charged by the time you leave for the job so you set a timer for the car that at 7 a.m. a fully charged vehicle should be waiting in your driveway so these are the things that we can reach up to if Today we start abandoning the gasoline based vehicles. So in short, the self driving cars that 2050 will seek its own charging point when needed and charging points will therefore be organized differently in other locations. So the way this works is let's say you go to a store, an electronic store, and this is just a knowledge that I'm giving. You use your cell phone as of today and you are on low charge and you ask someone for a charging cable or perhaps a wireless charger. They give it to you and they charge you charge your phone successfully. Now in the, in the year 2050 how this is going to be impacted is in a similar broadcast manner. Basically, whenever you're low on charge and you're traveling from one place to another, there will be a lot of charging points where you can stop by, put a full charge to your vehicle and start driving towards your destination again. 
all right now driving towards your destination calls for range anxiety now what does range anxiety means basically whenever you are let's say 20 percent on a, your fuel distant you're always anxious whether you will be reached to your destination before the fuel gets over so this factor is known as range anxiety furthermore the first for the average consumer driving range is a factor when considering a car we call range anxiety yet more 95 percent of our daily trips are less than 100 kilometers on average 30 of all our vehicles near never drive more than 100 kilometers per day we could make a start replacing this 30 percent with electric vehicles yet consumers tend to upskill their trip for occasionally longer trip so whenever there is a range anxiety we can start using electric vehicles so we can go to any point charging point and charge the vehicle without removing the range anxiety we would be having if we were to drive gasoline cars so how this impacts is the de development of batteries takes a fast leap forward so as you can see what i mentioned in my first slide the range that this provided was no more than 100 kilometers per charge and now when we talk about range anxiety we have as of today of 2020 we have a range of 400 kilometers if we were to take tesla and other electric vehicle giants they provide enough driving range for a person to go and already from statistics we know that a person cannot travel or does not travel more than 100 kilometers per day so the 400 kilometers is a very good range that is given by the manufacturers to a user however this does not account for people who will make a long range uh, trip and for that what we have to do is keep on investing in the electric vehicle market so that the batteries in the future such as 2050 will be much better and the range of it will be much better and also because we will talk about 2050 where people will be having a lot of cars the battery prices will also be reduced perhaps it might be halved of what it is today so what really how does that help us is that many car factors manufacturers uh, come out with affordable electric vehicles because the battery are now affordable and provide much more driving range than it did as of today so in short what this does is really provides a benefit in economic sector it really provides a future for year 2050 or 2030 gives us economic boost puts up uh, more jobs to people and really reduces our budget and reduces our all dependency on any factors that might be uh, happening due to the fact that oil are disrupting such as monumental defects or healthcare defectiveness of an average person how much he has he or she has to pay so these are the kind of benefits that we receive when we are talking about the purpose of electric vehicles and one day we'll have whole world using electric vehicles Thank you for watching. I hope you like this video. Give it a like, thumbs up, and subscribe if you haven't already.